Hi, I'm John Brafrano from Vast, and I'd like to show you a new plugin we've developed called Caption Assistant. Caption Assistant is a plugin for Vegas Pro 10 and Vegas Pro 9e that enhances the capabilities of Vegas closed captioning while significantly reducing the time it takes to caption a show. We use the beta of Caption Assistant to caption all 13 episodes of the new PBS series, Painting and Travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer. Roger is quoted in a Sony Creative Software's April newsletter as saying, We can easily caption our entire show in real time. It inserts my captions on the timeline at the beginning of the sentence right where it's supposed to be, making the job seem more like a fun video game than work. Well, let's take a look at what Roger's referring to as I show you the ease with which Caption Assistant allows you to caption your shows. Rather than showing you what each button does, I'm going to take you through a closed captioning session and teach you how to use the tool, and in the process, you'll better understand what everything does. So, let's start by um, invoking Caption Assistant. I have it up here already uh, docked in a window, but let me show you how I got it there. Uh, one way that you can invoke it is to go to the View menu, down to Extensions, and then you'll see Caption Assistant listed with any other extensions you've installed. By clicking there, you'll start Caption Assistant. You can also put it up here on the toolbar. I'm just going to close it and invoke it from the toolbar as I press the Caption Assistant icon. To do that, I went to Options, Customize Toolbar, and then I found Caption Assistant in the list on the left, and then click the Add button to put it in the list on the right. You'll also notice that Caption Assistant can be undocked. So it can be a floating window or you can dock it. I like keeping it docked. It's a little easier to work with the timeline and Caption Assistant that way. Now, what I have on the timeline is a DVD promo that was the 30-second uh, promo for Roger's Painting and Travel Show. Uh, we actually used the 20-second promo in the show, but the DVD promo that was 30 seconds had more captioning to it, and so that's why I chose to use this one. Now, let me start by showing you the transcript that we used. Uh, so right here, I've got the captions in two formats. In uh, this format, there's a caption on each line, and so if you have your captions separated out by lines, you can do it that way. But Normally, you'll just have the transcript that you gave the announcer. And so here's the transcript. You'll notice it's in paragraph form. Uh, there are sentences, you know, join Roger and Sarah Bansomer as they canvas America. Uh, and and uh, really, this is something that you would just hand to an announcer and, and they would read it. And so that's the most likely format you're going to have it in, the paragraph format. So that's the format that we'll use. Uh, so I'll come over here to Caption Assistant. This first icon is to create a new caption list. Since we don't have any captions, we don't have to clear them out. These next two icons are the Open Import and the Save. So first I'm going to hit Open and I'm going to load this DVD Offer Transcript, which is the transcript that I just showed you. I click the Open button and Caption Assistant asks me what kind of format is the text file? Is it single lines or is it paragraph that has to be uh, broken into separate captions? And in our case, it was a paragraph, so I'm going to select Paragraph and then click OK. Now you'll notice what Caption Assistant did was it intelligently went out and looked at the transcript, found sentences, and it broke the captions up into sentences. Where there were areas where a sentence couldn't fit on an entire line, like this second one here. Uh, this one is uh, 87 characters in length. And you couldn't fit that on an entire line because in captioning, you can only have 32 characters per line. And you really don't want any more than three lines uh, in your captions because then it starts to really encroach on your video. And so 3 times 32 is 96. And we don't want any of our captions to be over a length of 96, so Caption Assistant took this one, saw that the whole sentence would have been longer than 96, and it broke it up. But you have the option here to change things. If we read through this, we have uh, each disc contains three full episodes that will instruct and entertain you with Rogers, and then it breaks up personal insights into the art world. So you might have a more natural break of breaking it with the With Rogers. So that's what these two buttons do here. This button brings the first word up from the next line below it, and this one pushes a word down. So watch what happens when I push this button twice. I push it once, and Rogers jump down to the next caption. I push it again, and With jump down to the next caption. So you can adjust these captions uh, just by pushing these words up and down in the caption list. Now you'll also notice that all of these captions defaulted uh, to the uh, 608cc1 captions, but there's a number of captions that you could have used. What you would normally do is select this before you import the caption. So let's do that. I'm going to clear out the caption list. I'm going to change this to 
secondary closed captions, which is closed captioning three. I'll import that paragraph of transcripts again. You'll notice Caption Assistant remembered that I selected paragraphs the last time, so it will always remember your last selection. So if you work mostly in paragraphs, that'll be the default. Or if you work mostly in single lines, that'll be the default. And now you'll see they all came in as CC3. But what if you forgot to reset it and you really want them to be CC1? Well, you can select any one of these and change it at any time. So I could select these three and I could change them. Or I can click in the upper corner here to select the entire set of captions and change it to CC1 and you'll notice they all changed to closed captioning one. So you can change these after the fact. You'll also notice there's an alignment here. All of these by default were aligned left because I selected left align when I brought the file in. But once again, just like changing the captions, I could select them all and say I want them to be uh, left centered or I want them all centered. And we'll go back and change some of these and show you how things look differently on the timeline. Okay, let me make my two adjustments here uh, to get these the way I like it. And now what I want to do is I want to listen to the video and follow along and drop a caption at the end of each of these sentences. To do that, we have a transport down on the bottom that will go to the previous caption and the next caption, if you've already dropped some captions. And then there's a play stop, which turns into a uh, play pause. So it makes it very easy uh, to start and stop play. We'll go back to the beginning of the timeline. The plus sign will add a caption. And this halt will turn off the last caption. So you don't want to have a caption lingering on the screen. You can press this halt and it will put in uh, to stop a caption. So let's just play this back and drop some captions on the timeline. Join Roger and Sarah Bansmer as they canvas America. Your travels begin today with a paintbrush in your own DVD collection. Each disc contains three full episodes that will instruct and entertain you with Roger's personal insight. Okay, that's enough to, to make a point here. I'm going to show you what happened. First, you'll notice that I dropped this caption significantly after the announcer started speaking because you know they really started at the beginning there was no time to, to uh, press one so I could move this back if I'd like but one thing you'll note is that it was keeping time of the position and where these captions were and so if I move a caption on the timeline I can press this resync list with the timeline captions and it will update this time to be the, t the new time so let me press that and you'll notice that now got updated but watch what happened here and you can even look down at the wave the announcer started speaking here, but I put my caption there. Let me turn on. Uh, there are overlays in Vegas Pro 10. These are not in 9E, even though 9E does captioning. There are overlays, and you can do overlays for primary closed captioning, secondary closed captioning. So now I'm going to turn on the overlays so that you can actually see the captions on the screen. And watch what happens here. America, your travels begin to... You know, he started talking here, and my caption was a little bit late. I got a feeling some of the other ones were late as well. Each disc contains three. That one's a little bit worse. Each disc contains. He really starts talking and then the caption happens. That's because there's some reaction time. Uh, so let's go look at that reaction time. So what I'm going to do is look at uh, where the timeline marker is. Let me just zoom in here. So this is where he starts uh, speaking at about eight seconds in. And I dropped the marker at 8.07. So I was off by about seven frames. Well, that's what this frame offset is for. We've got you covered on this one. Now what I'll do is I will remove all the captions, because I, I want to go recaption them. Uh, and there's a button up here to remove all your captions from a project. Uh, and so while we're up here, you can load captions, save captions, and remove them. So I'm going to remove all the captions of the project. It's asking me, are you sure? You don't want to throw away all your work uh, if you hit it by accident. We say yes. Now all the captions are gone. I'm going to click on frame offset, and I'm going to up that to about seven frames. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to drop the first one while the timeline isn't playing because that one's a real hard one to get in this particular one. So I'm going to go to the first one, insert the, uh, the caption marker right there, okay? And now I'm going to play it, and as I listen to it, I'm going to drop the captions again. So let's see what we got. Join Roger and Sarah Bansmer as they canvas America. Your travels begin today with a paintbrush in your own DVD collection. Each disc contains three full episodes that will instruct and entertain you with Roger's personal insights into the art world. Be enlightened by our beautiful country as Sarah explores interesting landmarks along the way. There's more to art than keeping your paint wet. All right, so what happened there was I got a little bit apprehensive and I clicked too soon. 
uh, and that'll give me an opportunity to show you how the undo key works. Uh, and that's this little icon here, which is undo the last caption marker. And what it's going to do is it's not only going to delete the caption from the timeline, but it's going to move me back to the previous caption. So watch this. I'll just press, delete the caption from the timeline, and we're all ready to go again. Explores interesting landmarks along the way. There's more to art than keeping your paint wet. So whet your appetite for adventure. Log on to paintingandtravel.com for more details. Now you'll notice what I did at the end was, uh, because I didn't want that to linger too long, I hit this halt button and that dropped an empty caption that will stop the captioning. Watch when I play that back. More details. Okay, so that stopped the captions. Now let's watch this and see how accurate I actually got. Join Roger and Sarah Bansmer so as they canvas America. Your travels begin today with a paintbrush in your own DVD collection. Each disc contains three full See, episodes. That most of those are right on. Entertain you with Roger's personal insights into the art world. Be enlightened by our. So you can see how you know I've compensated for kind of that seven frame uh, slowness that I have in my reaction time, uh, and now I've got them dropped on the timeline dead on. So now I can take this session and I can save it if I'd like. Uh, so we're going to just take the default name, Painting and Travel DVD Offer. It took that from the project uh, that I was in uh, and I will save that so that if I want to reload it back in later, I have all my timings uh, intact. But let's go look at some, some of these alignments. Um, now, after you've entered your captioning, you're going to be navigating through the timeline and you might want to change things. One of the things we might notice is that there were some words that were spoke differently. Uh, if we look at this second caption here, and now I want to get to that second caption on the timeline. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say, find the caption marker for the current text. So I'm going to click, and it immediately snapped to that caption. The cursor snapped to that caption and found it for me. Likewise, I can come out to a caption, and I could say, find the caption for the current marker, and it will find the caption in the list, scrolling in the list if it needs to. Obviously, we have a small list here. Uh, so let's go back. We will find the uh, caption for this one. And now let's listen to what the announcer says. Your travels begin today with a paintbrush in your own DVD collection. All right, so he doesn't say the word personal, right? He leaves the word personal out. So let's double click on this caption. It opens up an edit window. And we can go in here and delete the word personal. Uh, now personal is not in there, and if I move the cursor, right, watch over here, if I move the cursor to refresh Vegas's window, you'll see personal is taken out. So in real time, it is adjusted the caption on the timeline with the caption in your text. Likewise, if I change this alignment, let's say I wanted this one to be uh, center aligned, uh, I can change it, it'll change it here, and then if I move my cursor, you'll see what center looked like. Um, or we can select a whole bunch of them, and let's say we'll make this left center. Now, let me explain to you how uh, left center works. Left center actually takes the longest line and centers it and then left justifies everything under that. So you can see here, it took the longest line and it centered it and then it left justified uh, everything under there. So it's a little, little different way. You see this one uh, is a little bit further in than the, the one before it. Right, so it took the longest line, centered it, and then left justified the rest. So that's another way that you can have your captions, or you can have your captions uh, fully centered. And sometimes you want to right justify them. If someone's speaking on the right side of the screen, you might want to right justify one speaker, left justify another. So you have all of these uh, alignment options, and as you're seeing, you can change them after you've dropped the captions on the timeline. Uh, and that's it. That's as easy uh, as it is to be captioning your show. Now let me just show you a couple of these other buttons here. Um, we have the ability to copy a caption to the clipboard and paste it somewhere else. So uh, let's say you needed to make a copy of this caption. I could take this caption and copy it to the clipboard, uh, then go somewhere else to move it and click paste and it will paste it at the line below. Uh, I could select the caption and delete it from the list and I can insert a new caption in the list and uh, type some new text. All right, so it gives you an easy way of inserting captions, deleting captions, copying and pasting captions. Now there's one last thing that I want to show you, and that is this caption editor. I would use this early on in your captioning, so if you're really not happy with the way uh, Caption Assistant has imported your text, you can open up this caption editor and then you can really uh, go in here and change things. 
right? So I'm gonna go change stuff here, and maybe you make some adjustments, you add some more words, whatever. When you click OK, it is going to replace everything in this window, including the alignments and everything, um, with the new text. So this is something you wanna do right up front. You don't wanna do this after you've been captioning like I have, uh, but it will give you another way to, to edit these. Now remember, I saved this, so I can just uh, open up the one that I saved, click on my painting and travel DVD offer.cac, that's a caption assistant file, uh, and then click OK, and it's loaded my captions back in the same session. The significance of this is if you wanted to replay the session again, um, and let's say we don't have any captions, so I'm gonna take all the captions and delete them, so now I don't have any captions, uh, but I can load the session in and then I can hit the process button. So I would only want to use process on a caption list that I've already saved from a caption session. And then I can hit process and there you have it. Your entire captioning session has been played back and all the captions have been inserted onto the timeline again. An alternate way to load and save captions is with these buttons up here. I can save the caption markers to a file and I can give it any name. So uh, dvdcaptions.txt, we'll say save. Uh, then I can delete all of the captions from the timeline once again. Uh, and then if I want to load them back, I do load caption markers from a file. And, and just to show you, nothing's going on here with the, uh, the captioning. I can clear this out. I can say load caption markers from a file, click on my DVD captions, and then there they are, they come back. So the difference between the load save up here and delete and the load save and delete down here is this is working on caption markers that are on the timeline and it only affects caption markers and these are working on captions that are within the caption assistant text window. So where this comes in handy is let's say you've captioned your entire project uh, and you need to make some edits and all these blue markers are just kind of in the way. Uh, you can very easily save them to a file, delete them from the timeline, uh, do whatever finish editing you need on the timeline without the blue markers in the way, and then load them back again uh, and, you know, and get them right back where they were. The other thing you could use this for is, let's say you wanted to transfer captions from one file to another, you can save them to a file in one project and then load them from the same file into another project. So it's just a handy way of just dealing with the caption markers themselves without having to worry about having the original text of the captions in a file format. So hopefully this has given you a good overview of what Captioning Assistant can do. Feel free to download a trial copy at www.vast.com and give it a spin with your captions and see if it doesn't improve your productivity and workflow in getting your show captioned fast. Until next time, I'm John Refrano. Thanks for watching.